So this is a common plant that you'll often pick up in the house plant market, and this is known as Fetonia albivenis, which means with white veins, which you can see that this doesn't have white veins, but this is a subspecies that has a little bit more of colorful pink veins. You'll find them with red veins. The reason why I wanted to bring out this specimen is because this has much larger leaves. So typically, Fetonia has smaller leaves, probably even, I would say, a quarter to a fifth of these, the size of these leaves. So I wanted to pull this one out because for two reasons. One, it's a little bit more unusual because there are some larger leaf varieties out there. And two, this one is about to bloom. So the flowers are not so spectacular on these plants and really the concentration is on the foliage and keeping the foliage looking compact and healthy. And oftentimes you could just cut the flower off so that the energy doesn't go to the flowers or the buds and actually stays in the leaves. So there is something that you could do along those lines if you actually want to do it. Um, if you ever go to botanic gardens, you will see these kind of growing along the understories and that is how this plant grows. So it is native to places like Brazil, Bolivia, Ecuador, um, countries along those lines in South America. And you would see this kind of growing on the forest floor, same way that they plant it in botanic gardens. So this doesn't need a tremendous amount of light. This is a plant that is suitable for terrariums. It's great for lower to moderate light conditions in the home. Um, and it's also nice because it brings in a little bit of pattern and color. So for those of us in the winter months when maybe things aren't always blooming or you just have a sea of green, then you actually also can bring in shocks of color and maybe you could get that through some begonias, but you could also get it through something like this Fetonia. Now, one of the things I'd like to say is that these leaves here, if you've never had a Fetonia, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them semi-succulent, but they do have a little bit of resiliency to them. So this plant doesn't really dry out all that, uh, all that um, easily compared to some kind of tropical varieties that, uh, you, know, that uh, you might be accustomed to growing. Also, it has a little bit more of a semi-succulent stem. So it doesn't mind a little bit of drying out in between waterings, but I would definitely keep it a little bit more moist than I would on the dry side. So if you're having it a little less of a porous mixture in your soil, so a little bit more of a peaty mixture in order to be able to maintain some of that wetness and that moisture in the soil, then I think that'll be better for this plant. Now, as far as fertilizing goes, um, this plant is not a heavy feeder. I would say a balanced fertilizer, even just on a monthly basis during the growing season is going to be great. Um, so like a 111, or if you're going the synthetic route, maybe a 10, 10, 10. Um, you could probably uh, find something within there that would be a nice happy medium. And again, for, um, for anybody who grows this plant, you know, you could probably grow it in a terrarium and that's great, but it will start to form and spread and, uh, and, and kind of has this like clumpy kind of formation. It could have a tendency to get larger, but if you want to scape it and keep it kind of this globular kind of looking plant and very well maintained, then you're going to want to clip it back. <laughs>